Hello everyone, welcome back to our Java OpenGL 2D game development tutorial series. Today, we are going to be doing two things. One is going to be really quick, and the other is going to be slightly more involved. Basically, we're trying to get the camera to follow the player around. In the last tutorial, which I released a couple days ago, uh, we created a tile system that renders a, an array of tiles before we render all of our game objects. Um, and the problem is we can't navigate that little world very much because it all renders you know, here in the upper right hand corner of the screen, but we can't go up and actually look at it because the camera doesn't follow our player. So to make the camera follow our player, we already implemented the camera system so we have nothing to worry about there. But in the renderer class, we had implemented two static floats called camera X and camera Y. The logic that allows us to use the camera has already been written, but in order to make it so that the camera follows the player, we go into our player class, and then we simply say renderer dot camera X equals X, and renderer dot camera Y equals Y. That's literally all you have to do to make the camera follow the player because all of our camera code is written in a previous episode. Now we can navigate the uh, array of tiles that we created. So that's relatively simple. The part that's more involved is going to be we're going to be optimizing our tile system or rather our rendering system in general. As you can see we have tiles that extend past the um, past the right edge of the screen over here and past the top edge of the screen right here. We can go up and we reveal those tiles, but when they're not on screen, we don't need to be rendering them. It's just a waste of time and resources to be rendering tiles that aren't visible to the player. So we're going to do a bit of math to figure out whether these tiles are actually visible. We're do what we're going to do is we're going to go into graphics, I believe it is, and here where we call draw image, we're going to do some checking first to see if we're actually visible. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to say, I believe that what we're supposed to check is if, we're going to create an if statement, if x, which is the x position, um, x minus width divided by 2, so in other words, x minus width divided by 2 means the left edge. If the left edge is less than 0, then the image, or then the images, no, that's not right. If the left edge is greater than renderer dot get, I've got to figure out exactly which one we need. We need basically the world width, uh, of the width of the viewport, I think it is. So let me see if that, if it's that. X minus width divided by two if the left edge is greater than, okay, actually I just checked something in my code, um, and I think there's actually something we're going to have to set up before we can do this. Basically, we can't use renderer.getWindowWidth like I was going to, because that doesn't make any sense. That's the width of the window, but not the width of the viewport in OpenGL. It's not the width of the uh, space that we actually have in the world. So what we need to do we need to go back into our event listener class, which is in the graphics package. This is where our GL events occur. As you can see right here in the reshape method, we calculate how many units tall the, the uh, viewport is based on how many units wide we want to be rendering uh, and the width and height of the window. Right now we just put that in a temporary variable, a float. We need to put that into a permanent variable and we're going to store that in renderer alongside units uh, units wide. So we say renderer dot units tall equals all of this. We go ahead and change this down here to be negative renderer dot units tall and renderer dot units tall. And go ahead and save that. Obviously you'll get an error because units tall does not exist. So go into renderer here where we've got units wide. Let's go ahead and create units tall public static float units unities units tall set it to zero or whatever because it doesn't matter it'll get calculated automatically 
And so these are going to be the width and height of the viewport. And so we can optimize our rendering by telling it not to render things that are outside of our viewport. So if x minus width divided by 2, and that means the leftmost edge of the image, if the leftmost edge of the image is greater than renderer dot uh, units wide divided by 2. It's divided by 2 because 0 is at the center of the screen. And so units wide divided by 2 puts us at the right side of the screen. So if the left side of our image is greater than the right side of our screen, then don't bother rendering the image. Now, if I ran this, you'd see no difference because they would only not render if they're outside of the window. But real quick, don't write this part of the code. I'm just going to do this to demonstrate to you what we're doing. Right here, I said the rightmost or the leftmost edge of the image by saying x minus width divided by 2. If I just say x, then that means when the center of the image is uh, off the right edge of the screen, it won't render at all. So you'll notice them starting to disappear as we move towards the right edge of the screen. Or maybe you won't. The question is, why not? Ah, uh, we've got to up offset for the camera, don't we? In that case, what we need to do is say if x minus renderer dot camera x. Let's try that. There we go. See what's going on right there? How our tiles are disappearing as they approach the edge? So what we're, what you need to write for your final line is going to be x if x minus width divided by 2 minus renderer.camera x is greater than renderer.units wide divided by 2 then return. Now we're, we're going to create sort of a bunch of um, a bunch of conditions here. So there's that. Now we're going to add in two uh, pipes here for or. Um, so if the leftmost edge of our image is off the right hand side of the screen or the rightmost edge of the image which is x plus width divided by 2 offset for the camera so minus renderer dot camera x if that is less than renderer dot units wide divided by 2 that should be negative renderer dot units wide divided by 2 I think then return now let's test that make sure it works we move towards the left edge of the screen it should be working I'm going to test real quick to make sure by getting rid of the width divided by 2 thing, but you don't have to do that. That's just for me to test. Yep, that's working. So x plus width divided by 2. Uh, so that handles left and right. Now we need to handle top and bottom. So we're going to add two more pipes for or. So or y minus width divided by 2 minus renderer dot camera y to offset for the camera if that is greater than renderer dot units tall divided by 2 I'm gonna delete this real quick just to test because I always get mixed up about which directions up yep that works so go ahead and add back in the w minus with uh, no not with this should be minus height divided by 2 so go ahead and change that to minus height divided by 2. Width is for the x and height is for the y, obviously. Um, okay, last condition. We're going to add another or. y plus height divided by 2. Offset for the camera, so minus renderer dot camera y is less than negative renderer dot units tall divided by 2 that should be it now what this is going to do when we render is any th images that are not on the screen will not be rendered we will ignore all that code now let's see how much of an improvement this makes what we're gonna do is we're going to comment out this optimization chunk that we just wrote then we're gonna go into main now I'm gonna do this you don't have to do it if you don't want to um, because it's just an optimization test I'm going to increase this to, let's say, 
40 by 40. Uh, so our map of tiles is larger. And now it's adding them all. Should end with adding our player. Or it'll get stuck. Okay, there we go. Uh, we got our player. And look at how jumpy that is. That is horrible. That is awful right there. We're getting 21 frames per second. That is bad. Um, as you can see, we're, we're getting that because we're rendering all these tiles that we don't have to be rendering. Because if we go back, I'm going to leave this here with 40 by 40, but I'm going to go back into graphics and uncomment uh, the optimization code. Let's see what happens now once we run the game again. It goes through and adds all the tiles. Adding the tiles is still going to be a little slow because we haven't optimized that or anything. And then it adds our player. And now look at that. Smooth as the butter you put on your toast. It is ridiculously smooth. Look at that. And why is it so smooth? Because we're, we still have a map of 40 by 40 tiles, but now we're not rendering any of the tiles, or really, we're not rendering any images at all that are off the screen. This detects if the image is not visible, and if it's not visible, it returns. So look at that. We get 61 frames per second again. So we went up from 21 frames per second to 61 frames per second by skipping all of this right here if the image is not visible. There's no need to do any of that. So as you can see, this optimization is extremely powerful. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, we've, we've covered a pretty good chunk of, I mean, we didn't do write a whole lot of code, but the code we wrote was very powerful. Uh, so thanks again for watching, everyone. Um, if you like the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.